putting this at the beginning of the video, then we'll continue with the unboxing. For 150 bucks, I think this Viva grinder, first, I mean, it is, even for what it is and its problems, 150 bucks is still a pretty good price, just because um, real, you know, professional shop grade eight inch bench or pedestal grinders and pedestals just where you mount it on a pedestal are 500 or a thousand dollars or more if you want to get a ball door or an old skill triple duty uh those things are really expensive so it is cheap that being said i think you're better off not getting the variable speed because it's not really that big of a deal and it's only 80 bucks for the non-variable speed version it does the non-variable speed does have cheaper tool rests a little bit these are cast where they're just stamped sheet metal on the $80 version but that being said uh, you'll see later on in the video the wheels had a bunch of wobble I couldn't fix that because these washers that are just too poorly stamped they just wobble and wobble how these cheap grinders work is the motor has a 16 millimeter shaft they grind down to a real precise 5 8 and then use these custom stamped or stamped washers which I actually believe just have a 9 16 hole and they just they have to be stamped real well and these are just wobble all over the place what i did went to the hardware store and got myself some 9 16 fender washers they will stop on that lip and you just have to stack a couple three of them on the inside you know and use another one on the outside these ended up being a lot straighter and i was able to straighten out the wheels the second problem is is they don't have a traditional over the back uh lamp that just takes traditional light bulbs they tried using these little led things which just have nowhere near enough light i wish they wouldn't have done that um the other problem with these things is they go in between these brackets which are adjustable so that as the wheel wears down you can adjust them downwards to help reduce sparks coming over the back of the wheel but when they're mounted it causes this the plastic guard to sit like way out here i mean it causes it to sit like a half a mile in front of the grinder especially if you want to have the light actually pointing out what you're looking at and then this whole thing just actually is just a lot of times blocking your view it's just an ill-fated and inappropriate design for lighting a grinding wheel really disappointed in that as well so besides the issues with the washers and basically you having to provide your own lamp the motor and the housing actually seems okay. It seems it has good bearings. They are sealed bearings. And it does appear to have a feedback type variable speed because there's actually a sensor wire that goes into the motor. So, and I will try to demonstrate that here. Lowest speed. So, even, you know, it's not a particularly powerful grinder, only 5 amps for on an 8 inch. But it's nice as a feedback, so it'll when you're running at low speed, really cheap variable speed grinders, even my Delta does this, where you start grinding and it really slows down the wheel, so you kind of have to over adjust it to go faster than really what you want, so that it slows down to the speed that you desire when you're actually applying load. So that's what's kind of nice, and I'll show you. This is a half inch drill bit, and oh, real quick tip when you're sharpening drill bits on the grinder, match your angle. And then sweep upwards. You gotta sweep up, hold the tooth. Needs to be absolutely straight with the, you know, you have your angle, the, the tooth needs to be flat like this, and then you just sweep up. That way you get the relief angle. But we have it on its lowest speed. And it, you can hear that it's actually not slowing down that much, even though I'm actually pressing pretty hard with this piece of high-speed steel. Do this a little more. I still got a little bit of work. Whoever had this drill bit before me just put it straight into the grinding wheel. That makes the cutting edge completely flat, and they don't cut. You need to have an arc so there's a relief angle so the drill bit actually gets a bite in the material.
So anyway, one of the best uses to have a bench grinder. Now you can see we actually have a nice relief angle and this big old long aircraft drill will work good. That's a big, I mean, sharpening bits is something really common to use for a grinder. We'll turn it all the way up. I tried balancing the wheels. These Chinese wheels are also not the best balanced. They're pretty darn good. They're flat. I just don't think the hole is absolutely perfectly centered in the wheel, although only really expensive wheels do that. But having it, uh, replacing those washers, we can see that it's really not too bad. Just a little bit of vibration on the cover there, but it actually runs pretty smooth now as compared to before. And I think his performance is generally okay. Of course, it will take forever to spin down with the mass of those two wheels. Caddis Maximus here. Yes, it's another promo product from Viver. I appreciate them sending me this stuff, even though certain things like their pipe and sewer inspection cameras suck. Uh, I still appreciate it. People complain that I do, you know, unpacking this. Got various accessories on top. Complain that I take these promo products, but I sell like half of them. I don't make much money on YouTube, so yeah, it's part of how I make some money to buy all the adjustable wrenches and other used power tools to keep my channel going. So I appreciate people tolerating some of these promo videos. And I'm sure a lot of my viewers, to tell you the truth, if somebody offered them a free 5 amp, 8 inch variable speed grinder. Just to make a simple video about, they probably do it. We got an interesting piece of veneer here for the back side. A little bit crack. Oh, I guess that's on the side for the base. I keep that veneer for something. Packed in styrofoam. Our usual inedibles. So, neat thing about silica gel is you can put it in the oven at like 250 degrees or so and uh, dry them back out and reuse these packets. It is just uh, silica. And here's our grinder. That has come with grinding wheels. This thing is kind of heavy. Uh, it by. Uh, it's actually quite heavy. I have another reason to get this. I have a old Delta, you know, not really old, not a good Delta, but a cheap. 8 inch delta variable speed grinder similar to this but it has like these quick release nuts and they just don't get the wheels on straight at all you just have to fight with it to get the wheels to stay balanced or on this there's barely oh this wheel is wobbling side to side and there's a trick to dealing with wheels that do that which is you got to kind of adjust them and then tighten down the knot and fiddle around with it Loosening, readjusting the wheel, retightening again until you get them uh, well centered. That would be after you pull off the wheel and just put it on a flat surface countertop or something, just to make sure you don't have some kind of misformed wheel. Other than that, it can just be a little bit of a hassle. It's the nature of uh, bench grinders is you got to fiddle with the wheels to really make sure that they're balanced and you can reduce the vibration. I still would have liked an overhead light, like a traditional grinder, and you can always put a lamp behind it. It's not a big deal. What Viver does is uses these three LEDs, takes a couple of whatever it is, AA batteries. And so what they are is they mount right here, and they're supposed to be lights that shine down right on the grinding surface, which is supposed to be okay, but of course, they'll end up getting crudded up. You'll have to clean them all the time. and Of course, they're battery powered. Actually, be nice to have both these as well as an overhead lamp. It does come with a little tray for water, which is better than nothing. Die cast aluminum brackets, but they're okay. And a couple of feet. And you do have a fine and coarse grinding wheels. Unfortunately, these feet are kind of designed to be. The fine side is this. I believe that groove is for sharpening drill bits, then it's standard there. No provision to hook up a vacuum, unfortunately. Right on the bottom 
you can see right there there is a small vent just to allow sparks and debris from to exit so it totally doesn't build up uh, inside the housing but it would have been nice if they included a provision to, to do a vacuum other than that the bolts that hold the covers on do have nuts and the lower bracket fast thumb screws the ones that hold on uh, these things also are three bolts so at least the cover should stay on pretty pretty well So, in conclusion, um, I think with the free shipping, and now I was considering it, given the issues that you're going to have to go to the hardware store and get some 916 fender washers that get the wheels straight, and the fact that it's basically missing light, those ill-fated little mount, double-mounted LED things are just the worst idea ever. Despite those issues... Free shipping on something that, I mean, this thing probably weighs 25 pounds and is a fairly large package for 150 bucks. You know, it's easily competitive with one of the, you know, the Harbor Freight 8 inch grinders. Something I will give them some credit for, at least the blade house or the wheel housings. Even it would be nice if they had a provision for a vacuum port, although it is something that you can kind of do it yourself. They do have some vents at the bottom, once again, to allow a bunch of the, you know, to prevent grit from totally building up inside there. They are cast aluminum tool rust instead of cast iron, but, you know, that's still okay. For 150 bucks, I think it's generally an okay grinder. I do like the fact that it does have one of those little safety things on the switch, so you can, you know, if you have kids, and you, grinders can be pretty dangerous. You know, any kind of fingers or anything that get in there can really be damaged. So it's nice that you can pull this out and it's kids can't fool with it. And the fact that it does have a sensor type speed control. So it does, when you're running at low speeds, does attempt to dump more power in the motor when it detects that there's a load on it. And these housings, at least they're reasonably strong. And unlike some companies that, like my Delta, which have like kind of like a quick release system... I actually prefer this style where they're just bolted together. That way the whole housing is actually does not rattle and holds together pretty well. Anyway, really appreciate everybody who's been watching. See you next time.